If I ask you right now, what is a variable in Python? Can you confidently and precisely give me an answer? And by the way, if your answer doesn't include the concept of mutability, I would definitely consider it incomplete. Mutable versus immutable is a fundamental topic in Python that every single Python programmer has to deeply understand. Not only does this core topic control the way every variable is created and handled in your code, it also affects how it's copied, passed to functions, and so many other areas in Python programming. And the best part, by the end of this video, I guarantee you'll have such a strong fundamental understanding of variables in Python that you'll be able to level up your Python game instantly. Let's start by understanding what really happens whenever we define a new variable in Python. First off, and the biggest misconception I see with beginner Python programmers, is thinking that variables are themselves the objects. For instance, when I write down num equal to 7, you might think that now the variable num contains the integer object whose value is 7. While this is mostly correct in other languages such as C++ or Java, in Python, however, it could be very misleading to think that way. In Python, every variable is a reference to an object, not an object itself. So here, when we wrote down num equal to 7, what actually happens is that Python will take a look at the memory or RAM of our machine and try to find free space that can hold an integer object with the value 7. Say Python finds available space at this specific location, so this object will be created and stored there, and now the variable num will actually contain this memory address. This is what we call a reference or a pointer. Num will never contain an object, but rather a reference to an object. If you think about it, this is actually the reason why in Python we are able to dynamically change the type of a variable without any issues. For instance, here I could set num equal to the string Joseph and my code will not throw any error at all. Why is that? Well, because num simply contains a reference to an object. So num itself is not bound to a specific data type or size. It simply points to something regardless of its type. All Python has to do here is find somewhere else in memory that can hold the string Joseph, save it there and now store within num this new address. Isn't that awesome? So keep in mind that whenever we define a new variable in Python or reassign a new value to an already existing variable, both of these scenarios will trigger Python to find a free location in memory to create an object and then the address of the new object is saved in the variable, which is what we call a reference or a pointer. Now that you understand this, let's move on to the concepts of mutable and immutable. To put it simply, mutable objects are objects whose value can change, whereas immutable objects are objects whose value cannot change. Let's take an example. Here we're defining a list which is a mutable object. This means that I am able to modify its content such as setting the first element to 20 for example and here we can see how this successfully modified the list's content. Appending is also another way in which we can modify the content of the list. Both of these features are only possible due to the fact that lists are mutable. If we take a string, for example, name equal to Joseph, and we'd like to modify the first character such that it is uppercase. So, if you're used to other programming languages such as C++, your first intuition would be to write down name of zero equal to the uppercase J. However, if you used Python before, you already know that this isn't possible and will actually throw a type error stating that string objects do not support item assignment. This is basically telling us that we cannot assign a new value to a character within a string object. Why is that? Well, because strings are immutable in Python. Now, does that mean we cannot modify this name variable and make it so that the letter J is uppercase? Well, of course we can, but to do that, we'll have to reassign its value, not modify its existing value. So here we can type name equal Joseph with an uppercase J, and this works fine. Let's take a look at what all of this means on a lower level. When we defined our list, as I explained earlier, Python found a free space in memory that can hold this list, and its address was stored in the variable grades. Now, technically speaking, the elements of a list are themselves pointers to objects, but for now, let's assume a list is stored like this in memory, as this will suffice for this video's material. And we'll go into the details of how lists are actually stored in another video I'm planning. So don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell button in order to get notified when this super exciting video is uploaded. Going back to our example, and after the definition of our grades list, here we're modifying its first element, meaning we're replacing this first value with the value 20. 
Notice how we didn't change anything else with regards to the list, and more specifically, we didn't modify its location in memory. So the variable grades is still pointing to the same location in memory. It's just that this location now holds different information. The same thing is observed for when we append a new element to the list. The location of the list remains constant in memory and its content is the only thing being modified. We can verify that in Python by using the built-in id function. ID is a function that takes as input a variable and returns the variable's identity, which is basically the memory address it points to. Let's print the ID of the list grades after defining it, after modifying its first element, as well as after appending a fourth value to it. And running this code, we can see how the ID of this list remains the same throughout all of these operations. That's exactly what mutability is. A mutable object is an object that can have its value modified in place. Other examples of objects that are mutable in Python include dictionaries and sets, both of which can be modified after their initial creation. And this can be observed by the fact that we can dynamically add new key value pairs to a dictionary, like so, without running into any issues. And here we can see how we can add element to a set also successfully and without changing the ID of the variable. Let's move on to immutable objects, and specifically to when we define our name variable and set it equal to Joseph. Once again, this will trigger Python to create a new string object containing the value Joseph in memory, and now name will contain the address of this object. As the strings are immutable, Python won't allow us to modify the value of this string in place. Once created, the value of this object cannot be altered. What we do in order to update a certain string's value is that we reassign a new value to it. What this does is the following. Python will create a new object in memory with the value Joseph with an uppercase J. The variable name will now contain the address of this new object and will no longer point to the old object with the lowercase j. As this object no longer has any variables that points to it, Python will delete it to free up space in memory. So whenever we need to modify a value of an immutable object, and as this isn't permitted in place, Python will actually have to create an entirely new object with the new value and make the variable now points to the new object. And this is exactly what immutability means. Other examples of objects that are immutable in Python include integers, floats, booleans, and tuples. Here we can see how the ID of num changes when we increment its value by 1. Also, immutability is the reason why we cannot add, remove, or modify elements within a tuple. Here we can see an example where we attempt to modify the first element of a tuple and we're met with the same type error we got before for strings. If you understood everything I explained so far, that is actually awesome. You already know more than the majority of Python developers. If anything didn't make 100% sense, try to replay its section. If this still doesn't help, please leave your questions in the comments below and I'll try my best to answer them. Before wrapping up this video, I want to touch on one more very important topic that mutability affects in our code. And that is setting a variable equal to another variable. This is something that you'll do very frequently when writing code, but you have to be very careful about it. Here we have an integer a equal to 5, and we're setting b equal to a. What this does is create an integer object in memory with the value 5, having a pointing to it. And whenever we write a variable equal to another variable in Python, this means that this new variable will now point to the same thing the first variable is pointing to. So in this case, both a and b will be pointing to the same address in memory. And we can actually verify that by printing both of their IDs, which as we can see right here are identical. Now, what would you guess would happen when we increment B's value by one? Feel free to pause the video if you want to guess this one on your own. And as a tip, I'll just remind you that integers are immutable in Python. Well, what will happen is that, as integers are immutable, there's no way we can modify the value right here in memory. So what Python will do is create a new integer object with the value 6 and change b such that it now points to this new object. Notice how a is still pointing to the value 5 and is not affected at all by this operation. To verify that, let's print the values as well as the IDs of both A and B after this assignment, and surely enough, A's address remained the same whereas B's address has been modified. 
So whenever you assign a variable pointing to an immutable object to another variable, you can rest assured that operations on any of the two variables will not affect at all the value of the other variable. Now let's take another example. Let's set A's value to the set 1, 2, 3, and we'll keep B equal to A. Here, the same scenario occurs. The set 1, 2, 3 is stored in memory. A will hold its address, and as we're setting B equal to A, this will result in B also pointing to the same address, which is also verified in the sprint of IDs. Now, let's add an item 10 to B. Once again, feel free to take a second and guess this one on your own. And as an extra tip, keep in mind that sets are mutable in Python. Okay, so sets are mutable. This means that they can have their values modified in place. So this 10 will be added right next to the other elements within this same object in memory. Printing B will naturally show us that now B contains four values. Notice how A and B are still pointing to the same object in memory. This means that when we print the value of A, here you go, this change also affected the variable A. If you're not careful about this in your code, you could potentially run into some super hard to debug issues that will cause you endless headaches, and I'm definitely not speaking from experience. So, whenever you set one variable equal to another variable, always be cautious whether the objects you're dealing with are mutable or immutable. Immutable objects will remain separate, let's say, and changes to the value of one variable will not affect the value of the other variable. Mutable objects, however, will remain linked as both variables will be pointing to the same object, which is itself modified through both of these variables. So changes to the value of one variable will affect the value of the other variable. If you want to create an entirely new copy of a mutable object, you'll have to explicitly copy it. Most mutable objects will have a copy method just for that. So here, setting b equal to a.copy will force Python to create an entirely new copy of this set in memory and make b point to this other address. So running this code, we can see how a and b's IDs are different from the get-go and how the addition to b didn't affect at all the value of a. One thing worth noting here is that copy will not always guarantee that both variables are completely independent from each other's modifications. There's an important distinction to be made between two types of copies, one called shallow copy and another called deep copy. However, this is a topic for another video that I'm super excited to work on and share with you. That's it for this video, I really commend you if you made it this far and understood all the concepts I laid down. Even though all of this concept is fundamental to understanding how Python actually works, I'm not exaggerating when I say many Python developers aren't aware of all of these topics. So kudos on your efforts. If you enjoyed this video, definitely don't forget to subscribe and activate the ring button, as I will be uploading lots of similar content in the near future covering all the fundamental workings of Python. And as always, don't forget to like if you want to learn even more Python.